I don't need a new saw. I've got a lot of saws, um, but I want one. I want a radial arm saw, and I've wanted one for years for no other reason than to cut dados, just to set it up as a dedicated dado saw. Not to rip, not to do fancy cuts with, nothing. Um, so I decided that instead of buying a brand new one, uh, there's some beautiful ones out there that people just throw away uh, on Craigslist. So that's that's where I'm going. And I've been hunting for the last four months, I think, on, uh, on various web forums, including Craigslist. And I finally found one. So uh, I and uh, a buddy of mine, Jake, are going to go check it out and see what we got to see. So I got it. <laughs> I didn't video it. The, the gentleman that I bought it from was, was really not into me pulling out the phone and videotaping the, the saw and the transaction in his space. Um, he, uh, he's a former Boeing engineer on 777 and he's retired and they are moving to a smaller space so he's parting out his shop. Um, so I didn't record, I, I listened to him, I'm, I'm good at that. And uh, let me show you the saw. Well, it looks like my new to me radial arm saw is from 96, which makes sense because it has the post 94 guard on it. But look at this owner's manual. The, uh, the guy took super good care of it. Let's take a look at the old way of cutting just even a single dado slot in a piece of ply. Opening up one of the router drawers, finding a router that hopefully has a three quarter or half inch bit in it. Hopefully, I'll grab this one. Nope, not the right bit. Ha! Ah, three quarter inch, quarter inch shank. Okay. All right. Now let's set the the router up. How deep do I want to make that pocket? Open that up. Adjust this to get the the bit at exactly the right height. Then I grab one of my router squares and just for giggles, I put a framing square on just to make sure that the temperature didn't change or humidity and make it move a little bit. Um, it doesn't really matter if I'm doing only like eight inches, but if I'm doing like 24 or 12, it, it matters. So then bring it over on my board, find my mark where I wanna, where I wanna cut the dado, and then figure out how I'm gonna clamp this down and uh, make a, a test cut just to make sure my depth's right and make sure that the fence hasn't wobbled and I don't have any trash in here. And then I'll make my one cut. In trying to get the radial arm saw level on a uh, 150, 200 year old French oak workbench um, that is warped beyond pale, I am using wedges, opposed wedges with a little dab of glue between them. Uh, and I made sure that it was level this way and this way and corner to corner. So the next thing to do is to screw it down um, and then pull out the blade and check in the corners and see if that's level. And then I'll adjust these rails before I put the bed back on. All right, that's better. Nice and clean. And checking the height of the sides it actually looks like this one is a sixteenth or so high. So I went ahead and loosened it and I've got out my calipers and uh, some feeler gauges and I'm gonna go ahead and drop it down and then uh, just because I can, uh, <laughs> trying to get it as precise as possible and uh, I'm gonna drop it down and then see uh, see how close I can get it to, to both, uh, both dead flat and uh, level from side to side. All right, now then, exactly the same. All right, so it's level to and fro, and I put the feeler gauge, and I have the exact same clearance, both there and back.
uh, and a la Frank Howarth and Mountainside Workshop, um, I put a vacuum fence and a plenum into my dust extraction system as well with, uh, with blast gates. Um, that you can manipulate and that way it keeps the shop relatively dust free I mean not completely but relatively all right in, in building this I think if if I were to do it again and um, as I redo this a little bit I think I'm gonna actually raise the fence another um, three quarters of an inch piece of plywood level um, it's just it's it's a little too short and that with the flap will really help out um, when I cut these bolt holes, because it's through bolted um, with, uh, if you can see it, with T-nuts, um, here in the fence itself, I actually didn't just drill a hole, I cut a slot. Um, I, used, I used the mill for it. Um, you can actually see that here. And so that way, uh, when I need to square the fence or the fence gets out of square or, or whatever, it's, it's really easy to loosen these up and push the fence one way or another um, all the way around to get it square uh, to the blade, whichever blade I, I choose to use. Now, in case you didn't know it, radial arm saws have a reputation as uh, hand manglers. And if not used right, they absolutely are. Now, this particular craftsman was after uh, the lawsuit that, uh, that craftsman settled. And so what they ended up doing was putting this guard on and this anti-kickback. So this is, this is a, a post-lawsuit machine, so this is early 90s. Um, like I mentioned, the guy I got it from is a retired Boeing um, aerospace engineer um, and previous mechanic, kind of a green to gold situation. Um, meticulous care. I mean, other than this piece of duct tape, I don't want to talk about that. But everything is... Everything's really well taken care of. Everything had been lubed and the, the motor's in great shape. It even still has the plastic bit on from the auxiliary shaft that sticks out. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think I lucked out in finding this and I think it'll be not the centerpiece of my shop, but a, a nice addition and a huge time saver for me. I am going to paint um, a red splotch here um, all the way across. To remind me to keep my booger flickers out um, from in front of the blade as I pull it across because this does not have uh, a flesh sensing throw the blade break um, this will keep going right through fingers and thumbs so I'm gonna add that little little piece just just for me I'm also gonna I'm gonna coat the the deck here um, with polyurethane just just cuz here's where the radial arm saw resides and lives um, and I've got it co-located with my miter box saw just so I can use um, all this space. If I'm using, if I'm cutting a piece of trim or something too big, um, what I can do is either pull the saw all the way out or turn it sideways so it gets out of the way. Um, fun fact, it's actually sitting, both pieces are sitting on a piece of slab oak uh, carpenter's bench that we got when we lived in France. And on top of that, I guess that is sitting on... Um, a set of turn of the 20th century, so going from 1800 to 1900, um, lathe legs that are cast steel that are just absolutely gorgeous. So anyway, there there is the whole setup in the in the shop with the uh, the Festool tracks behind it. They're actually really easy to get to as well with uh, with this cutout. You just reach over and grab them. So happy, yeah, real happy.